Shalom and welcome to Religion Wing TV where my spiritual ears stay. Guys, get your Bible and your okay, tea because we're about to get into oh, it. Oh, let me just say, people like to get up and read people for filth, but we like to get up and read people to life, life more abundantly. And we do this because people cannot physically see, they cannot literally uh, read. And some people are just church hurt and abused by people in hurt in church that they have turned their hearts away from God. Shalom and welcome to Religion Week TV where my spiritual ears stay. to give it to you like this this morning i want to do the best i can okay i'm gonna talk loud and clear all right i'll try to keep it with under an hour we got about 81 verses to go between between three chapters welcome to the morning read y'all this is episode 36 i believe and guys, let me just tell you, it's April 7th, and we've been doing this aloud since March 2nd, guys. Absolutely. So this will be a premiere, guys. I'll be down in the comments with you. When the music goes off, we will go ahead and just, you know, um, begin to read. 1 Samuel chapter 19, 20, and How's everybody today? feeling this Sunday morning? I'm a little cut off at the top, guys, but I promise... I'll do my best so you see my mouth move, you see my hands move, <laughs> and I think we can get ready to begin, okay? I'll give you a brief summary, a flashback, a recap of Samuel, the first like prophet, priest, prophet, judge of uh, Israel, then Saul comes along. And now we're into David. And one thing I want to summarize is David killed Goliath, freed the Israelites from the Philistines. And Saul come along and set David up by saying, come on. Oh, look at your content. Look how pretty you are. Look how nice you are. Look at, look at you. You're the man. You killed 10,000 people, more so than me. Right? Only to set him up to put him to war against the Philistines, hoping he'd get killed. And additionally, he says he can marry his daughter, which was a trap as well. This is Religion Link TV, and my spiritual ears stay. Alright guys, so the first verse of chapter 19 goes so. And Saul spake to Jonathan his son, and to all his servants, that they should kill David. I was telling you, this is a summary from yesterday. Verse 2, but Jonathan saw delighted much in David. Jonathan told David, saying, Saul, my father, seeketh to kill thee. Now, therefore, I pray thee, take heed to thyself until the morning, and abide in a secret place, and hide thyself. Okay, so the Saul's son, Jonathan, is giving David a forewarning here, like, yo, man, my dad gonna kill you. He doesn't really like you, okay? He's been trying to kill you since you killed Goliath, the biggest man on the Philistine team, right? So, and I also told you that Jonathan and David have some kind of salt covenant, and other people say that they were allegedly gay, but we're going to get into their story shortly. So then, uh, excuse me, one moment. So it says, And Jonathan spake good of David, and saw his father, and said unto him, Let not the king sin against his servant, against David, against, because he hath not sinned against thee. And because his works have been to thee word very good. Because David's work has been very good to you, David. I got Wiley's shirt on. I should say Wiley got my shirt on. I should say Marquita the the the, <laughs> the cross out. Verse five. And David did put his life in his hands and slew the Philistines. And the Lord brought great salvation for all Israel. Thou sawest this and did rejoice. 
wherewith, wherefore, then wilt thou sin against innocent blood to slay David without cause? And 6 goes on to say, And Saul hearkened unto the voice of Jonathan, and Saul swear, as the Lord liveth, he shall not be slain. Okay? Then it goes on, verse 7, um, and Jonathan called David, and Jonathan shewed him all those things, and Jonathan brought David to Saul, and he was in his presence, as in times past. 8 goes on to say, And there was war again, and David went out, and fought with the Philistines, and slew them with a great slaughter, and they fled from him. So Saul was always using David to go out and kill the Philistines after he killed Goliath on his own, really. Kind of using them here to get rid of the enemy. Because, you know, you heard the two, the lesser of two evils. Well, the Philistines is the greatest evil to Saul. And David is not that much of a threat because he has a heart after God. So he's not the kind of person that go out and kill and just kill, steal, and destroy. But he will go to war for the armies of the God of Israel, of the living God, this word says, as we read yesterday. So, um, 9. And the evil spirit from the Lord was upon Saul. We read this. Um, as he sat in his house with his javelin in his hands and david played with oh his let hands. me just say people like to get up and read people for filth but we like to get up and read people to life life more abundantly and we do this because people cannot physically see they cannot literally uh read and some people are just church hurt and abused by people in hurt in church that they have turned their hearts away from god right and so, 10 goes on to say, And Saul sought to smite David even to the wall with its javelin, but he slipped away out of Saul's presence. And he smote the javelin into the wall, and David fled and escaped that night. This went on prior. We started this read, guys. Check this out. We started, I believe it was March 2nd. We started with Deuteronomy 5, right? Chapter 5. And we've been reading aloud 36 days now, and we're on 1 Samuel chapter 19, right? And we only have, we're on verse 11, and we only have to go to 24, so we're doing pretty good with the read. But guys, I encourage you to get filled with the word of God so that that evil don't want to dwell within you. There's a way to overcome the evil of the world. But you have to be a part of it. You have to begin to engage your faith. And increase your faith. And be of good courage, my sons and daughters. You know, let those who have ears hear what thus saith the Lord. So, 11. And Saul also sent messengers unto David's house to watch him and to slay him in the morning. And Michael, David's wife, told him, saying, If thou save not thy light tonight, tomorrow thou shalt be slain. 12. So Michael let David, let David down through a window, and he went and fled and escaped. 13. And Michael, Michael, took an image and laid it in the bed and put a pillow of goats, hair, his bolster, and covered it with a cloth. So there's a bolster that came upon him. 14. And when Saul sent messenger to take David, she said, He is sick. 15. And Saul sent messengers again to see David, saying, Bring him up to me uh, in the bed that I may slay him. Saul's only mission here is to kill King David. Alright, I didn't know if you guys could still see me or not. Saul's only mission here is to kill King David, okay? So let's go on. It goes on to say, 16. And when the messengers were come in, behold, there was an image in the bed with a pillow of goat's hair for his bolster. 17. And Saul said unto Michal, Why hast thou deceived me so? And sent me away my enemy that he is escaped. And Michael answered Saul, He said unto me, Let me go. Why should I kill thee? 
Why do Saul's and the Saul's of the world want you to kill people on their behalf? Why, why don't they have enough heart or why do you allow them to use you in this way? Be not ignorant of Satan's devices lest he gains advantage on you. Now Paul said anybody, I saw said anybody that killed a Philistine can marry his daughter. And we see even in doing so that David, um, this is the one daughter either espoused to David or will be espoused to David. But her father is still trying to use her to kill his enemy, his son-in-law, her husband. It happens today, people. Be mindful of this stuff. So, 18. So, David fled and escaped and came to Samuel to Ramah and told him all that Saul had done to him. And all, and he and Saul, Samuel, went and dwelt in Naioth. 19. And it was told Saul, saying, Behold, David is at Nioth in Ramah. 20. And Saul sent messengers to David. And when they saw the company of the prophets prophesying, and Samuel standing as appointed over them, the Spirit of God was upon the messenger of Saul, and they also prophesied. You could be an enemy messenger going to the messenger of God and in the midst of going God can change your heart around and now you're prophesying on behalf of the most high God 21 I do believe and when it was told Saul he sent another messenger and they prophesied likewise and Saul sent messengers again the third time and they prophesied also God can change your heart in the midst of going to do evil against his people just keep that in mind, people. That's what it means, be sober and vigilant. Pay, be awoke, pay attention to the signs of the times and the things the Bible talks about. So, 22. Then went he also to Ramah and came to a great well that in Sectu, and he asked and said, Where are Samuel and David? Um, and one said, Behold, they be at Nioth and Ramah, 24, the second to the last verse of this book, of this chapter. And he went tither to Nioth and Ramah, and the Spirit of God was upon him also. And he went on and prophesied until he came to Nioth and Ramah, 24, the last verse. And he stripped off his clothes also and prophesied before Samuel in like manner. And lay down naked all that day and all that night. Wherefore they say, is Saul also among the prophets? God can change an evil king's heart to where they question you and say, Are you one of the prophets that was there prophesying? So this is Religion Week TV and my spiritual ear stay. We're going to go ahead and continue to read chapter or 20 verse 1 and we have about 42 verses to go so let's get it guys and David fled from Naoth of Raham and came and said before Jonathan what have I done what is it what is mine iniquity and what is my sin before thy father that he seeketh my life David's like yo man why your dad want to kill me what did I do in front of the king in front of him. I've done nothing but fall. I married his daughter. I X, Y, Z. I left my father's house. Who was Jesse. What? 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 What is it? So the, uh, verse 2. And he said unto him. God forbid. That shall not die. Behold my father will do nothing. Either great or small. But that will shew with me. And why should my father hide this thing from me? It is not so. 3. And David swear moreover. And said, Thy father certainly knoweth that I have found grace in thine eyes, and he hath let not Jonathan know this, lest he be grieved. But truly, as the Lord liveth, and as the soul liveth, there is but a step between me and death. For then Jonathan, Jonathan said unto David, Whatsoever thy soul desireth, I will even do it for thee. 5. And David said unto Jonathan, Behold, tomorrow is the new moon, and I should not fall to sit with the king at the meat. 
But let me go that I may hide myself in the field unto the third day at evening. Like, let me go. Like, let me go over here, stay to the third day, and I'll be back, right? Verse 6. And if thy father at all miss me, then say, David earnestly, ask leave, me, leave of me that he might run to Bethlehem his city. For there is yearly sacrifice there for all the family. 7. And if that and if he say thus, it is well, thy servant shall have peace, but it but if he be very wrong, then be sure that evil is determined by him. So verse eight goes on to say Therefore shalt thou shalt deal kindly with thy servant, for thou hast brought thy servant unto a covenant of the Lord with thee. Okay. Notwithstanding, if there be in, in me iniquity, slay me thyself, for thou wouldst, shouldest thou bring me to thy father. Like, kill me yourself. Don't bring me to your father. I've never done nothing to your father. Your father kind of crazy, dude. He wants to kill the one person that saved us from the Philistines. Why your father so jealous of me? Your dad been trying to kill me with a javelin. He got this evil spirit on him that God put there, as we read uh, yesterday. And, and, and he won't leave me alone, dude. I'd rather you kill me, dude. You love me more than your dad. I'd rather somebody who loved me keep to kill me from keeping the enemy from killing me. And verse 9 goes on to say, And Jonathan said, Far be it from thee, for if I know certainly that evil were determined by my father to come upon thee, then would not I tell it to thee? Ten. And then David to, then said David to Jonathan, Who shall tell me? Or what it or what if they or what if thy father answer thy roughly thee roughly? Eleven. And Jonathan said unto David, Come and let us go out into the field. And they went out both of them into the field. Twelve. And Jonathan said unto David, O Lord God of Israel, when I have sounded my father about tomorrow any time or the third day, or behold, if there be good toward David, and I then send not the unto thee, and show it show unto it to thee. thee. 13. And the Lord do so, and much more to Jonathan. But if it please my father to do thee evil, then I will shew it thee. And send thee away, that thou mayest go in peace. And the Lord be with thee, as he hath been with my father. That's a heck of a place for Jonathan to be, right? Be an armor bearer to David, love him so. Also, an armor bearer to his father, love Saul so. Saul don't like his best friend David. Fourteen. And thou shalt not only while yet I live shew me the kindness of the Lord, that I die not. 15. But also, thou shalt not cut off thy kindness from my house forever. No, not when the Lord hath cut off the enemies of David, every one of from the face of the earth. He's like, no, when the Lord cut off your enemies, don't forget my family. We've been good to you, man. I know God is going to do something special with you, David. And when God goes to cut off your enemies, please let him remember me. 16. So Jonathan made a covenant with the house of David, saying, Let the Lord even inquire in it at hand of David's enemies. 17. That's one covenant. And Jonathan caused David to swear again because he loved him. For he loved him as he loved his own soul. Now, guys, let me say here. There's some Kojic black gay men that will say David and Jonathan had a sexual We're relationship. We're going to keep reading to see if that's so, right? But at the same time, let's just see it for what it is. You can have two men of God love one another so in the spirit without being like the Roman Catholic Church who vow not to take women as their wives and, and mothers of their children because they like to molest other people's children. It to renew their youth so let's hope that's not this um and again Sodom and Gomorrah already took place and there was men there that wanted the men that were with Abraham and Lot and God says I'm gonna burn this city down uh walk away from it don't look back and Lot's wife 
who I can look up her name and research it, but she's just a pillar of salt because she looked bad. When God want to destroy wickedness like uh, Sodom and Gomorrah, men sodomizing other men in Sodom and Gomorrah, then that's what happens. That's what befalls upon thee. And Christ is always teaching. It will be like Sodom and Gomorrah to some people in the last And days. I told you guys, Matthew 19 and 22, Christ talks to the disciples, apostles about eunuchs. You either made that way of your mother, made that way of men, or you made yourself that way. Born of your mother's womb, made that way by men, or you chose to be a eunuch, okay? And there's nothing new under the sun. But it says for the kingdom of heaven's sakes, not for the wickedness of the world. So, you have to choose. If you see gay men out there, is it righteous of God? Is it wickedness of the devil? Is it righteousness of God? Wickedness of the devil. Christ talks about it. Matthew nineteen twenty-two. So, let's see where this relationship actually goes with David and Jonathan. Okay, we do not want to be deceived in these last days about anything. Not even gender. Not even sexuality when it comes to this Bible. We want to be clear. Because Christ said, of your mother, of other men, or you made yourself that way. For the kingdom of heaven's sake. So let's be real about why men are gay and choose to be that way. Or, and are that way. There's only three ways they can be that way. So, verse... 18 then Jonathan said to David tomorrow is the new moon and thou shalt be missed because thy seat will be empty normally he sits with the king but that's what kings do they'll call you in oh come sit with me eat my delicacies partake in this partake in that all setting you up to see you fall in front of the kingdom like Humpty Dumpty who had a great fall right so, 19 goes on to say, And when thou hast stayed three days, then thou shalt go down quickly and come to the place where thou didst hide thyself when it was in hand, and shalt remain by the stone, Ezel, Ezel, 20. And I will shoot three arrows on the side thereof, as though I should shot at a mark. 21. And behold, I will send a lad, saying, Go. Find out the arrows, if the if I expressly say unto the lad, Behold, the arrows are on this side of thee, take them, then come thou, for there is peace to thee, and no hurt, as the Lord liveth. Okay, verse 22, and we have to go to 42. So that's 20 verses to go, and this chapter is over. But if I say this unto the young man, Behold, the arrows are behind beyond thee, go thy way, for the Lord hath sent thee away. 23. And as touching the matter which thou and I have spoken of, behold, the Lord be, be between thee and me forever. 24. So David hid himself in the field. And when the new moon was come, the king sat him down to eat meat. 25. And the king sat upon his seat, as at other times, even upon a seat by the wall, and Jonathan arose, and Abner sat by Saul's side, and David's place was empty. Are there empty seats with the king today? You see any empty seats out there in the world? People who should be there, but that's not there? Don't, don't count it all as a loss. Sometimes God has people not there for a reason. And sometimes you shouldn't want to sit with the so, king. So, 26. The Nevertheless, Saul spake not anything that day, for he thought something had befallen him. He is not clean. Surely he is not clean. 27. And it came to pass on the morrow, which was the second day of the month, that David's place was empty. And Saul said unto Jonathan his son, Wherefore thou comest not to the son of Jesse to meet, neither yesterday nor today? Like, where is he? So you'll be missed. People will notice you're not there. 28. And Jonathan answered Saul, David earnestly asked, Leave of me to, be, to go to Bethlehem. Leave of me to go to Bethlehem. 29. And he said, Let me go, I pray thee. 
For our family had the sacrifice in the city, and my brother had commanded me to be there. And now, if I have found the favor in thine eyes, let me get away, I pray thee, and see my brethren. Therefore he cometh not unto the king's table. 30. And Saul's anger was kindled against Jonathan, and he said unto him, Thou son of the perverse, rebellious woman, do not I know that thou hast chosen the son of Jesse to thine own co confusion and unto the confusion of thy mother's nakedness? 31. For as long as the son of Jesse liveth upon the ground, thou shalt not be established, nor thy kingdom. Wherefore now send and fetch him unto me, for he shall surely die. 32. And Jonathan answered Saul his father, and said unto him, Wherefore shall he be slain? What hath he done? 33. And Saul cast a javelin at him to smite him. Had his own son, y'all. Whereby Jonathan knew that it was a determined of his father to slay David. Like he, he purposed it in his heart. Now, he trying to kill me over this man. I know he wants to kill him, right? You know anybody like that, y'all? 34. So Jonathan arose from the table in fierce anger and did eat no meat the second day of the month. For he was grieved for David because his father had done him shame. 35. You know any people your parents are shaming because of their hatred for them, because they don't like them or whatever reason? 35. And it came to pass in the morning that Jonathan went out into the field at the time appointed with David and a little lad with him. 36. And he said unto his lad, Run, find out now the arrows which I shoot. And as the lad ran, he shot an arrow behind him. 37. And when the lad was come to the place of the arrow which Jonathan had shot, Jonathan cried after the lad and said, Is not the arrow beyond, beyond thee? 38. And Jonathan cried after the lad, Make speed, make haste, stay not. And Jonathan lad gathered, gathered up the arrows and came to his master. 39. But the lad knew not anything. Only Jonathan and David knew the matter. 40. And Jonathan gave his artillery unto his lad and said unto him, Go carry them to the city. 41. And as soon as the lad was gone, David arose out of a place toward the south and fell on his face to the ground and bowed himself three times. And they kissed one another and wept with one another until David exceeded. So this is probably where they said they kissed, they wept. I mean, uh, if you know somebody's going to kill your man or your best friend, you would cry, probably sob with them as well. In my spirit, I don't feel they had a sexual relationship here. Reading, okay? So, verse 42, the last verse of this chapter goes on to say, And Jonathan said to David, Go in peace. For as much as we have sworn both of us in the name of the Lord, saying, The Lord be between me and thee, and between thy seed and thy seed forever. And he arose and departed, and Jonathan went into the city. So guys, this is Religion Wing TV, and my spiritual ears stay. So let's keep reading verse 21, and we only have 15 verses to go. And being led by the Holy Spirit, verse 1 of chapter 21 says, Then came David to Nob and to Amalek the priest. And Amalek, Ahimelech, was afraid of the meeting of David. And said unto him, Why art thou alone, and no man with thee? 2. And David said unto Ahimelech the priest, The king hath commanded me a business. And have said unto me, Let no man know anything of the business whereby I send thee, and what I have commanded thee, and ha and how, and I have appointed my servants to such a such a place. Three. Now therefore, what is under thine hand? Give me five loaves of bread in my hand, or what there is present. 
Five, four goes on to say, And the priest answered David and said, There is no common bread under my hand, but there is a hallowed bread. If the young men have kept themselves at least from women. He's like, there is no leaving bread, no bread made by man's hands, but there's a spiritual bread I can give you. Five, and David answered the priest and said unto him, Of a truth woman have been kept from us about these three days since I came, and the vessels of the young men are holy, and the bread is in the man are common, yea, though it were sanctified this day in the vessel. So it goes on to say, Six. So the priest gave the hollow bread, for there was no bread there but the shoe bread that was taken from before the Lord to put hot bread in the day when it was taken away. This is the bread I said that was technically in that Ark of Covenant, the Ark of the Lord. So eight. And David said unto Ahimelech, And is there not here under thine hand spear or sword? For I have neither brought my sword nor my weapons with me, because the king's business required haste. Like, I had to get away real fast. 9. And the priest said, The sword of Goliath and the Philistine, whom thou slewest in the valley of Elah, behold, it is here, wrapped in a cloth behind the ephod. If thou wilt take that, take it, for there is no other save, save that it here. You know, there's no reason to save it here. And David said, There is none like that. Give it me. That should have been my prize trophy from the beginning. I slew Goliath. I cut his head off. And I should have took his sword then. So verse 10. And David arose and fled that day for fear of Saul. And went to Ashish, the king of Gath. Now this is the king of the Philistines. That's where De uh, Goliath was from. Goliath was from Gath. So let's see how it happens. Verse 11. And the servants of Ishi said unto him, Is not this David the king of the land? Did they not sing one to another of him in dances, saying, Saul have slain him thousands, and David his ten thousands? And this is what they were singing and preaching, y'all, and just praising that made Saul originally mad at David. Like, I'm the king. I got the kingdom. How are y'all praising him because he killed 10,000? I killed 1,000, but yet I got the kingdom. What more do he have than me? He had courage. He, ha he has the, the Lord on his side. And he fighting them battles and winning. <laughs> so they was praising him and Saul got jealous, y'all. Envious. Convet not your neighbor's things, right? 12. And David laid up these words in his heart and was sore afraid of Ashish, the king of Gath. 13. And he changed his behavior before them and fiend himself mad in their hands and scrabbled on the doors of the gates and let his spittle fall down upon his beard. I told you King David let play like he was crazy, like some of y'all people doing out here in this world. He went to the king of the Philistines and in order to get through the gates and in order to get through this crowd it says that um, he changed his behavior because King David was a wisely man but he started acting like a foolish man then it says he fiend himself mad he was a very calmly man but he was like mad like angry like hostile like ah and then it says his spittle fell down his mouth upon his beard he was slobbing and drooling, but he was making the enemy think he was crazy to save his soul. Some of y'all just out there playing crazy to get cash app, to get donations, to get SSI, to get people to feel sorry for you, to control people. Because there's a lot of people with bipolar out here leading these YouTube streets, and I beg to differ. 14. Then said Ashish unto his servants, Lo ye, see the men is sad. Wherefore then have you brought him up? Have you brought him to me? In the last verse of the read, guys, well under an hour, let's go. Have I need of mad men that ye have brought this fellow to play the madman in my presence? Shall this fellow come into my house? This madman? We don't want this madman. I believe he's going to say, let this madman go, guys. 
This is Religion Link TV, and my spiritual ears say, For the things of God, let's go. Alright guys, so that ends the morning read, y'all. Thank you so much. This is episode 36. You never know what you're going to get in the morning read. Let's go ahead and summarize this up. King Saul has lost his damn mind, y'all. He wants David dead. He wants his son dead. At no cost. He don't like David because people were praising David, a king elect, unknown, unbeknownst to Saul at this at this time, versus the king. The king elect got more praise than the king himself. And people, that will make people mad. That will make people jealous. That will make people envious. When the highest YouTuber gets less praise than, you know, a, a smaller YouTuber, right? So, let's go ahead and, uh, see, summarize the book of Samuel. Tomorrow is the 8th. We'll be reading chapters 22 through 24. So, that's 22, 23, 24. When this song goes off, the morning read will end. But thank God, the word of God is the same yesterday today and forever right the grass may wither the flowers may fade but the word of god stands forever so with that being said guys you know let's take into consideration let the word of god be a lamp unto your feet and a light unto your pathways according to psalms 119 and 105 right and wherever you go, right, you step, it will be bright. And wherever you walk, wherever the Holy Spirit leads you, you shine light, guys. So with that being said, I want to just encourage you to get caught up. Go back to Deuteronomy chapter 5. Come all the way to Deut uh, 1 Samuel chapter 21. Or go back to the beginning, which is Genesis chapter 1 and 1, right? So you can be on one accord with us with this morning. Guys, it's been real. Let your light keep shining bright. Why? Because this is Religion Week TV. And my spiritual ears stay. Shalom, you all. Thank you.